Just look at our beautiful solar system. How glamorous it is. From this perspective, it looks like there's a lot of traffic going on. But the objects you're seeing here are enhanced so that you can have an idea about the number of rocks orbiting around our lovely sun. Our solar system is, or could be, shielded by an enormous spherical shell called the Oort Cloud, home to countless objects like ice, rock, and maybe other dwarf planets. But why the uncertainty? A lot of people talk about the Oort Cloud as if it's factual. It probably is, and a lot of theoretical astronomers and astrophysicists are certain it exists. But it's not that we have any direct evidence. We yet have to directly observe an object over there, even though we have observed long-period comets which are thought to originate in the Oort Cloud. These long-period comets take longer than 200 years to complete just one orbit around the Sun, and differently from planets, their orbit is often very ecliptical, which is yet another indication that there's an Oort Cloud out there, which is sometimes described as a cometary reservoir. This cloud is the most distant region of our solar system. The Kuiper Belt, home to Pluto, starts at about 30 AU astronomical units from the Sun and extends outward to nearly 1000 AU. The Oort Cloud, on the other hand, occupies a region between about 2000 and 100,000 AU. That's one quarter to halfway between the Sun and the nearest neighboring star. That's incredibly far away and one of the main reasons why we barely know anything about it. It's distant, diffuse, and even though predictions say there may be over a trillion icy objects orbiting there, the Oort Cloud is extremely dim. We're going to need some cutting-edge technology to investigate this region. So, what makes us think something like this exists? For some observed comets to have such elliptical orbits, they must have come from very far away. And the way they behave in the inner solar system suggests that they must have spent most of their existence far from the Sun. But how did these comets end up floating in the inner solar system? The most logical answer is that some sudden orbital change causes them to start orbiting toward the center of the solar system in an extremely long and highly elliptical orbit. Comet Hale-Bopp is one of the known long-period comets. Astronomers Alan Hale and Thomas Bopp observed it for the first time in 1995. The comet passed perihelion, the closest point to the Sun in 1997, and it's been getting away ever since. To give you a perspective of its highly stretched orbital trajectory, the next time it will visit us again will be after about 2,500 years from now, and its previous perihelion was about 4,200 years ago. The object likely belongs to the Oort Cloud, and scientists learned that it was about 4 billion years old and that it formed in the outer solar system between Jupiter and Neptune before being flung into the Oort Cloud. Do other solar systems have an Oort Cloud? It's very likely that every planetary system has some leftover debris. I mean, star systems form in protoplanetary disks, which are formed almost immediately after the collapse of a molecular cloud. So there's always going to be tiny bits of rocky objects. Our Oort Cloud could have originated in the Sun's protoplanetary disk of debris, where eventually all of the ice and rock coalesced into small bodies or protocomets. It's hypothesized that these protocomets were much closer to the Sun than they are now. The gravitational interactions with the gas giants tossed them far out. In the meantime, the Sun could have captured even other interstellar comets, thus adding to the population and creating the hypothesized Oort Cloud. Astronomer Ernst Opik was the first to propose the cloud. After theorizing about the origins of solar system comets, he came up with the idea that they originated in a cloud orbiting far beyond Pluto. Later on, astronomer Jan Oort first worked out the math which kind of proved Opik right. He also found that these faraway comets can become trapped into tighter orbits by Jupiter and become periodic comets like Halley's Comet. Decades of observations and refined calculations made the idea of Oort Cloud even stronger, and the hypothesis for a lot of scientists is now considered almost proven. Even computer models of the solar system's formation predict that the gas giant would have scattered an enormous amount of protocomets outwards in the system's early days. And what led scientists to conclude that the Oort Cloud is a sphere that enshrouds the solar system? 
That's mainly because we've seen long-period comets come in from all directions. And that's also one of the reasons we know they aren't coming from the Kuiper Belt, because if they did so, their orbit would most likely bring them closer to the ecliptic, the plane where all solar system planets orbit the sun. For the time being, the Oort cloud remains a theoretical concept, but it's the most widely accepted explanation for the origin of long-period comets. Want to hear a fun fact? Voyager 1, the fastest and farthest man-made object which is leaving the solar system, will reach the Oort cloud in about 300 years, and would probably take about 30,000 years to pass through it. If you like this video, please consider subscribing and click the notification bell so you do not miss any upcoming videos.